This audio is brought to you by muslimcentral.com. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala abdillahi wa rasulihi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. My beloved brothers and sisters, the aim that we have is to earn paradise. If you're a believer, that's what it should be. So if you have a connection with Allah Almighty, you would know that you are on this earth just for a few years in order to prepare for the eternal life. One might ask why? The true answer is Allah knows best. But we see and we witness every single day people being born and people dying. We see people being born and Mashallah, there is excitement upon their birth and we see people dying and there is sadness upon their death in the case of most people. <laughs> Subhanallah. The reason I say that is when there's an evil person and he dies, everyone says, Mashallah, Alhamdulillah, did you hear the guy actually died? You know, let's hope we're not from among those, my brothers and my sisters. So we see it happening and we are the most sophisticated of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of what is known as posture and even the brain, the understanding. Allah Almighty says, لَقَدْ خَلَقُنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ We have created man in the best of postures. Ahsan means the best. If Allah is saying the best, He's challenging you that there is none better than this. Do you think of any other creature of Allah better posture than ours? I've always said, and I'm sure you've heard it, where your ears are, where your eyes are, where your nose is, where your mouth is, your tongue, where your fingers are, where your nails are. Can you ever think of a better place to put those organs? The answer is no. No one has and no one shall. It's absolutely superb the way Allah has made. Subhanallah. So we see that we're so sophisticated. Today I'm in this beautiful, beautiful town. It's a town, right? Town of Keithley. And I tell you, it's so amazing as we're meandering, coming to, to this particular place from where I was up north in Blackburn. I can say something. Some of these roads are so narrow, yet so beautiful, that you know what? They delay us. So may Allah grant us ease. We had, a, we had a vehicle in front of us at a slow pace, and we couldn't really navigate. And we had to wait for a certain place in order to overtake that particular car. But for me, it was so beautiful because I was witnessing all the fields and the beautiful greenery and thinking to myself, imagine Jannah and how it would be. No comparison, no comparison. But still we say, subhanallah, whenever we see nice things, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, mashallah, tabarakallah, isn't it? So Allah Almighty has given us a brain to look at this. The eyes with the brain together. We look at this, we appreciate it. I want to spend more time you know, I want to stop. I want to go and visit these fields. I want to see the horses. We saw some swans and ducks as we were coming across. And I see such lovely, beautiful brothers and sisters and amazing. We'd like to talk to you. I'd like to spend more time with you. I'd like to greet you. I'd like to know you better. But I'm a human being on earth. I, I can't really do that. I can't really do that. Why? Time is never on our side. I'm glad that I met you today, even from a distance. I'm so happy. You're my brother. You're my sister. But at the same time, the world has limitations. Now, the question is, do you really think, do you really think that as sophisticated as we are, we will just suddenly come to an end without being able to fulfill what we wanted to fulfill, even if it was beyond the point of what we know as death? I don't believe that. I believe Allah will give us the opportunity to meet again under better circumstances when we can actually sit and get acquainted with each other. When we can actually have such time that there will no longer be need to worry about it because it won't exist anymore. It's timeless. So Allah says, 
oh man, we have created you in a certain way. So sophisticated. In order that you worship us and you do the right thing, you have a brain to understand right from wrong, guided by revelation. You see, the mind is such that it is very sophisticated. However you fill it, it will be filled. So if you fill the mind with that which is not beneficial, it will give you back that which is not beneficial. If you fill the mind with that which is detrimental, it will give you back that which is detrimental. If you are from an early age and stage going to learn the wrong things, the seeds that you sow at the time will reap fruit that will be harmful for you. If someone taught you when you were little that one plus one is three and they looked at you and showed you two fingers and said this is three and you kept on saying one plus one is three and you showed them two fingers, you are confused. The person who taught you is confused and up to the time you die or up to the time someone else corrects you, you might grow up believing one plus one is three yet you are showing two fingers. So what you are confused by is the figure two and three. You've mixed them up. That's what it is. Why? Because you were taught wrong from from the very beginning. Let me give you another example. When you're learning the Quran, if your teacher does not know, you're not going to know beyond your teacher. And if your teacher is wanting to fiddle with your mind, he's going to teach you wrong. Alif is Ba and Ba is Alif and Ta is Tha and Tha is Ta. And what happens to you? You grow up being able to read, but you're reading so wrong. Whose fault is it? It's the fault of the system that taught you absolutely wrong. But you grew up believing firmly that you are right. That's the problem. Allah says, we've given you a mind if it is guided by revelation and you use it within that guidance, you will definitely come to the most content life on earth. I promise you, my brothers and sisters, go around looking and searching. I've done it. The happiest and most content people on earth are those whose faith is strong. They control themselves. They don't just do what they want. They are disciplined. They speak in a, in a certain way. They carry themselves in a certain way. They connect with their maker knowing that I'm made by a maker and I'm going to go back to that maker. And so they have lovely days when they suffer a loss. They are patient knowing that we're going to earn a reward from Allah. And when they earn something and when they, when they have a profit and something good happens to them, they, they are happy within a limit and they thank Allah without becoming arrogant and proud knowing that the gratitude belongs to the one who gave me the owner of everything. And at the same time, he could take it away any minute. May Allah grant us goodness. So these are very, very deep thoughts and very beautiful teachings that if we were to ponder over them, they would make us better Muslims. And when you're a better Muslim, wallahi, you become a more content person. The minute you run behind that, which you are not supposed to be running behind, Allah Almighty tells you, you know what? You're going to lose firstly your contentment on earth. Now one might ask, well, I've seen people who don't believe in Allah and they're quite content. Well, Allah Almighty tells you that, you know what? They might be happy. They might be happy because we have chosen to reward them in this world for the good they may have done because there are a lot of people who don't have faith. But